hi everyone and welcome back so this is the part two of the last video in this video we are going to build a auth service using nest.js all these things i'm not using i will just try to get rid of them and then we are going to use user entity is fine here this is the user entity which is talking about what we are storing okay i will be adding a couple of more attributes to this this is not enough and the auth and the user I will delete these because we are going to create our authentication controller services a user controller user services and we are going to write them from the scratch okay so what is the what is the next thing how we are going to design all those things together that is the important part and here we have app auth so we are going to create uh, we can do lots of things here also like uh, inside authentication we can create all the controllers dtos and services or inside domain i can just create uh, auth authentication module and there is another module is user module and then we have to spin up all the different things inside this we need to have a dtos okay like i will just create a dtos and inside dto let's say because we are going to create two different apis login and register but first we will create a controller auth.controller.ts auth.service.ts inside authentication i will keep adding these files so what all you need uh, to build an api inside a nest.js you need these all are nest.js building block creating service creating controllers creating dtos creating uh, validation pipes or interface and all so controller services and what we need controller will expose the api routes and controller can services will be injected inside a controller you can also have a DAO layer data with data access layer which actually talks about the type rm repositories here we are using type rm repositories and we are talking about user authentication so we don't need a separate entity right here we just we will be creating the entities and all inside the user so here it will be user entity dot ts user will also have a dto folder and then we will add user controller dot ts okay user module dot ts user service dot ts that is the last file we have user service dot ts okay similarly inside auth we are going to add lots of other things first of all we i think we forgot auth module auth dot module dot ts because we are going to uh, do the authentication uh, local authentication where you are you are going to enter username password and then we are going to use jwt strategies to send you the to intercept the cookies post login coming to the server side or we are going to use this strategy to authorize or validate the token which is coming inside a cookies because you will have some protected route let's say i'm i'm going to add a posts module also here which is all about okay adding the post creating the categories and all so this is a post folder and then there is another folder we have is category so let's say i'm creating a simple blogging blogging platform where only a logged in user can access that post apis create post apis okay for that we need to use the jwt strategies auth strategies to validate okay whatever the token coming inside a session or inside authorization header is valid because you can send these tokens in multiple different ways either you can send them inside a cookies or you can send them inside inside authorization headers okay okay so we have all these modules here this is user inside user we will have a controller module and service similarly in the authentication uh, that contains auth controller auth service and auth module now rest all are creating the guards 
local authentication guards and uh, and JWT strategy or local strategy so that user can log in by just entering the username password okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to create authentication controller authentication service all these things inside it and all the local strategies and all create uh, auth controller so auth controller is there auth service we already have apart from that what all we need so let's start with auth controller so what, what the simple controller contains a simple input say this is our simple auth controller right what this auth controller is doing if you look into this it is importing the auth service so here we we might be exporting auth service so let's first create auth service and how we create the service in the next years we just use injectable right and then here put class uh, authentication service okay this authentication service will have the same constructor and inside a constructor we are going to inject the dependencies for this service and then it is going to have all the methods which the controller can use like the register login all these methods register login generate session cookies based on once username password user is entering correctly so verify password um, create a session token all those sort of methods we are going to create inside this so here the thing is because this is authentication controller and authentication service we also have this user domain where we also have a user service so all the operations which are related to the user like find the user based on this email find the user based on this password will be done through the user service so all those operations will be externalized to this otherwise we will be using jwt service and config service that is local to this but this auth module is dependent on the user module because here we are going to add a dependency on the user service so I expect it right because auth service and auth module will be dependent on the user module to find the user in the database so here we will we can also write the user service to to fill in the blank because here user service will be first and inside a user service we will just do the same injectable i can copy the same so here is my user service we'll just replace it with the user service right and it has a constructor and inside a constructor because this is going to access this user entity uh the user entity is also empty so i'm just trying to add the user entity first and how we do the entity in the typo rm we just annotate it with entity this is uh, the typo rm expression we see if we are able to get it then we can just class user or export class user export default maybe so this is like a user entity or and this entity we are importing from is it the type or i'm not added here so we are just trying to fill in the blanks uh, type rm is there this type rm is there and let me check if node module is there yes it is there sometimes it's just a typescript which is not giving me uh, things to import so this is we will be imported from type rm all the column properties and all so this is the class user and now here i will be just adding all the columns so what all columns we have in our in our, in our table so what all columns we have primary key id primary key id email a name exclude also we can add like exclude when you are performing the queries exclude uh, will be used to not re to not return the password from the entity because we don't want when you do a get user by id we don't want to return the password also in the, the select all query or there is another attribute you can do is inside a column uh, there is a property 
we can specify which is select false i guess i will try to i will try to show it so inside a column also we can specify the multiple properties yes select false that will also do the same thing that means is this column will be not be selected in the type rm queries okay this is exclude and then this is also a column so i will just try to build this little fast so we have a password and then what do i have is i also have the post uh, domain post domain means user will also be dependent on user can write a multiple post and only the logged in user would be able to create a post so we will create a, some kind of a relationship with the user and the post for now this is like a simple stuff here we have a user entity and let's keep these simple uh, three four properties so this is user entity and inside a user service we can inject the repository this is how we create a this is how we create a service right here what we are going to do is inject repository inject repository and the repository is user that we will import and here it is private uh, user repo that we are going to use to access the table and this is repository repository of type user so using this user repo we would be able to access the user so and we can just define all the method i think get by email sorry this will be outside this is your constructor and here inside this you can have all the different methods get by email get by id i will try to add a couple of these get by id and we are going to use this type of our repositories to access that so this is pretty much simple get by email what we need to do we just need to pass the email property to this and here we are going to access user repo dot find one and if it is doesn't found we can throw the http exception and http status is like not found that we can import and this email is we are going to receive as a string and why this is complaining user report dot find one okay we need to pass the where clause okay so we are just doing dot find one give me this user or get by id get by id also we can do it in the same way so here also we can do now this will be done by id so we are getting id as a string because id is i think uh, primary generated column okay so either we can just make this id as a uuid so that id will be a string that we will convert and then here instead of where id equal to this id will be a string okay find operator id is number so first of all let's convert this id into a string and convert this id as a auto generated uuid column okay so this is the get by id and then similarly we have a create uh the create is create we need otherwise we can skip other methods create inside this you need to have a user type and there is a type we need to create so inside this interface user dto i think we have an interface so here we can create a create user dto, DTO ts and what this dto contains and this dto simply contains up to what all properties we want by creating a user we need email name and the password okay you can also add a validations so for first we will build it and then we will add the missing pieces like okay because we are using class validator so here we can add api properties and the validation to each and every property okay this is of type email this is a password with a minimum length name should be required all those validations so here we can use a class validator 
and I will also import all the required things. So this is like export class API property and how we can annotate all these things because these things will also be exposed to the API property and inside API property we can specify all the payload properties. Okay, what this API property means description. Okay, if it is required or not required through okay and then example example value that is just for swagger doc like how the email looks like right and then this is the public email string here you can also add some validations like if so is defined and is email this is this will be used by class validator okay same thing we can add to other places this is about name this is about password so password will be okay min length min length would be let's say six okay it should be min length it is coming from class validator six password okay you can put anything in the password it is just a uh, class validator and this is defined this is required name is also defined and it should be of type string okay this is uh, the name so in the description okay this is talking about name this is talking about email of uh, user some description about it password with min six length so this is a dto and swagger docs will be exposed to all these validation criteria for us now create user DTO because this is being used inside a user service. Create user DTO here we are creating a user. So what what we are doing is we are creating a user based on the payload. So uh, here what we will do is we will just write a code because now we are getting the user const new user equal to await this dot user repo dot create simply just pass the user data and it will create a user and then await uh, this dot user repo dot save new user there are many ways of doing it either you can just pass the whole payload here and it will create a user and you can just return the new user from here user okay that's it so this is how we are doing create now we, we are just building a simple authentication right so i think these three methods are more than enough and now this user service will be added inside a user module right how we create a simple module is we just use inject uh, sorry module because we are using we are defining a nest this module so all the imports will go here then we have providers then we have exports what all we are exporting from this module and then controllers so controllers uh, obviously we are going to have a user controllers i will just create a simple template for it so this is controller and then here i can just simply say export class user controller so we can export it here this is a constructor and inside constructor there will be a dependency injection of uh, user service private read only user service this is how we do the dependency injection and then we will just define the methods inside a controllers okay this is the API route so we'll start with the users and then here you define all the, the methods I will be doing it I'm just putting creating the controller first creating the module inside imports are we importing anything we need a type or a module at least so we need we'll use type or a module dot for feature because we are accessing the user entity here 
user is a part of user entity and then providers means any services we are using user service export this export this user service from here and export this module by adding a class export class user module okay what is the issue with this can't find this we'll import it so I mean, this is how you create uh, basic things we have module we have service we have entity we have controller that means this is a full-fledged module and this module can be used across any other module so for now we are going to use it inside the authentication module so authentication module also we can initialize i will just try to copy the user module stuff and will replace things there and controller is also we can use you already have something in this service okay inside authentication service now let's go one by one inside authentication service we check we can add the dependency of user service only when this user module is added as a provider right inside a module so this is the auth module here i can access user service only if i am importing a user module user module now i can access because user module is exporting the services so that service i can use inside a auth module and then similarly what all i'm going to access here type forum we are not going to access any entity here because all the database operations are happening inside a user service inside a user module and uh, we are going to use gwt modules and all the other things here similarly the providers providers will be authentication service i will just check uh, authentication service or serve this we can also export and the controller is our controller okay and then here it will become authentication module okay the user module we can import from the user module remove all these things which we don't need so we will, we will add all the other modules which is needed by the authentication module because we are going to use jwt passport and all okay so what is the next thing how we are doing it if you remember we also created a packages here right app logger app config or app database we also created a database package so those packages we are going to use in this application because how we are doing we are not using type rm module dot uh, as uh, async right all these things are happening in this database module if you remember this is how we have created a database module in the last video so you can see type rm module dot for root async we created it as a separate package so that we can use this package in any of the application which we are creating in our system so how would we initialize there will be a domain module we are going to create which is a root module domain module and here we will be defining all our auth module database module all the things so let's clean this up auth module DB module is fine let's remove the necessary stuff from here okay now user module so we need to import a user module and auth module because this is the domain module is a root module which is sitting on top of uh, authentication module and the user module and here we are initializing our database module user so there is a user entity we have I will pass it so this is how we are initializing the database module by passing for root so this is our module this is the code we have written right and then provider services and then we also are going to have some middleware that is going to so this is just a logger middleware that is fine auth middleware or we can use auth guard so we will decide that how to do it so this is the class we will decide this code if we want to use this okay so this is domain module this is the root module and this domain module can be used by this app module because root what do we have in the root app module so we just need to import domain module there domain module is importing the auth module user module 
and also we are going to have post module right inside a post we can create a simple entity for now let's say here i have a user module i will copy this put this inside a post so what is the use of it because we are going to create some post apis so this is the post module and i will be creating some entities later that i can import here so we will be just do, working on this later once we are done with the user module but this is how we will be exporting this and then we can import this inside our domain module okay we also have another module let's say post module that will be for creating a post and publishing the post for the logged in user so you need to be authenticated for that okay there is a typo so i will fix the folder name authentication just rename it uh, authentication okay now let's work on authentication first we are inside authentication controller so what we are doing with the authentication controller is we have a simple implementation let's say the login register logout okay so authentication i will just start uh, creating the logout and all post so we are also going to use swagger because swagger will expose these api spec uh, to the swagger url so we will also register a swagger module i think we might be already using it let me check uh, create document yes we are using a swagger module already so we just need to uh, use these swagger annotations properly so that we can expose the api docs that that what what all api status code this particular endpoint can return what will be the the data this api will return once it is successfully executed what should be the status code what will be the data format what will be the data format for the payload what are the types all these information can be exposed through the swagger so what we will do is we will just use some proper annotations to write our controllers so that we can expose as much information as we want so here let's say we are creating a post authentication i think we can just do the register okay this is post which we can and now here we just define all the other methods okay what is the http code so i can say http code register is 201 okay and uh, this is simple async and here we can define lots of other things let's say api consumes so all these things will be exposed to the swagger i think i have already covered all these things in the detail api consumes and you can just set application json okay then api ok response let's say api is successful and for ok response like 200 but it, this is going to return 201 so there is there are different annotations available for that api created response that means uh, once api has successfully executed it then what will be the response and all will be available so description user registered successfully and you can also specify type okay what will be the what you are going to return from this so there is a type property and this is a custom type response property type you are going to create that we will create like what the registry api should return okay and then uh, there are other annotations you can specify okay let's say if there is an internal server error uh, all these methods you can specify let's say you are doing a delete so always create should return 200 201 let's say if there is a put then you can just do api okay response api no content response all these annotations you can use to just expose the swagger spec properly now register so what we are doing we are doing a register and uh, here we need a register dto so i will just use the register dto we need to create so what register dto says says is it should have i will just create here 
register.dto and we have already created a DTO in uh, last section. So I will just use this for now. And we can we can enrich this by using these API properties. So Swagger Docs can expose all these properties. So this is the email API property you can import from Nest.js Swagger. So this is the email which you are expecting in the sign up API and the name. So this is the name property and I think this is also required not empty and then there is a password obviously required in order to add a minimum validations if you want. Or oh, this is the password required through. Okay, mill length let's keep it as a six same as the login API is not empty is defined or is not empty is kind of similar. So this is a register DTO. Inside a controller, you import register DTO. This is how we create a simple post API. Now inside this body, you have received the, the payload, payload which you are sending through the request. And what we do is uh, return return this dot authentication service. And here we are going to create a register method and we are going to pass this body. So there should be a register method which should be able to handle this data. It's a simple method we are going to write inside auth service. So our first method will be public async register. Okay, and what you are passing to this method is a payload, right? I will just say body and which is register DTO. I mean, you can just say register body DT or something like that. And here we will start working on getting data from this body. You can extract all these properties if you want. So what we are getting is email, name, password and start uh, creating a user. So what we will do, we will create a hash password by using bcrypt. So we need to use this bcrypt library. Let's say if we already have it, so we'll import the bcrypt library to create a hash version of the password. We will add it. So we are going to use a lots of new libraries here, bcrypt, JSON web token and all. This is the hash and we have the already the password and pass the sort value. Okay, and then either we can wrap everything inside a try catch. If there is an error, what you can do is throw a new HTTP exception. And here you can just pass the message. Some error occurred and you can just say HTTP status dot internal server error occurred or there are predefined exceptions also. What you can do is throw new internal server exception. This also you can do and you can just pass the error object. There are many ways of doing it. You can throw the HTTP exceptions or use this custom pre-built exceptions. Okay. And here what we are doing is const user equal to update. And here we are going to use this dot user service dot create, right? User service already has this create method. So we are doing is a body this body payload which we have already have and then we'll just override the password value password with the hash password that's so created user because we need to hash the password before we do it created user dot password we'll just set it as undefined once it is created and then we just return it return created user I mean, simple implementation you can do by just writing a single file in the express. We are just uh, learning like how we can build a production ready applications uh, using Nest.js. If there is an error, so there are, the error can come due to different reasons. Either what we can do is because email may be unique. Uh, here if you see user entity, there is a unique property. That means if you try to insert the new record with the same email, either you do the check 
before registering the the email so this is user service right okay we are doing a create so i will do one single thing to prevent any issues user data dot email email dot lower case so user data dot email dot lower case so we know what email property we are storing and then inside this user service only uh, or here while registering it we can do the first find by email if user already exists we can throw the exception so here const uh, is the user exists right we can just do the check this dot uh, user service dot find user by email await this dot user service dot get by email so what we can do is we can just pass the email which we are receiving if uh, what it is it throwing an exception http not found exception that is not good uh, what we can do in this case is we can just throw the we can return null if it is there then we can return null exceptions we can throw at the receiver end because we need to see if we are uh, receiving null or not so now if user exists uh, let's say if user exists is user exists so let's say if it is null if it is not null right if user exists that means so new conflict exception there is conflict exception means user already exists right and here email dot to lower case conflict exceptions user with email already exists something like this you can do instead of uh, getting an exception from the database because if you insert with the same email here also you can handle it that uh, for a particular error code you can customize the response okay user with uh, error code with this already exists something like this so here you will check is error dot code equal to so there is some error code for this postgres uh, postgres error code dot infinite violation or something like that i am not able to recall it if it is there then we import it postgres error codes that is coming from some we can create a custom error codes so there is a unique violation error code there is a specific error code is returned postgres error code dot unique violation if it is equal to this that means you can just throw this custom exception conflict exception that uh, user already exists with this email right so we don't need to do it because we are checking the user already exists or not if user already exists and it is not returning null that means throw the conflict exception otherwise allow user to create and return the user so this is all about our simple sign up now we will go to the controller and uh, this is our register we can just do the other 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 implementations like login and all so we can just do a simple login here status code will be 200 a post will be login application json user logged in successfully logged in successfully and this is going to be the login and body this you can use a login dto i mean this is a simple uh, same method so here we are going to specify now the important point is here you are trying to do the login right so you will be passing uh, the username and the password in the payload and then we will be validating okay user really exists or not okay so either uh, we pass the payload here but i want to do it in a little different way why i will explain why i'm trying i'm going to do here is so passport we are going to use and passport provide a local strategy or a gwt strategy and local strategy is all about okay you are entering the username password and uh, it will just validate you just need to specify what is the username field and from the body it will extract your 
uh, username and it will check that username password matches or not so we, we need to just create a local strategy and local authentication guard and we will put the guard on top of login so whoever is hitting the login that guard will execute first that guard will check your username password and then only it will allow you to access so that means whatever you are going to do i mean there are many ways we just pass the login detail here enter the, get the username password and do the validation of okay i i got the email password check the email in the user service and compare the password using bcrypt.compare that's one way or if you want to make it little nicer then you can use authentication guard and use the local authentication strategy okay so what we are going to do here is this is our authentication and here we are going to create local authentication guard local.auth.guard.ts and here another file i'm going to create is .strategy.ts we are also going to create a jwt strategy and all so what local strategy will do here i will just put this is the injectable class here I will just say export class local strategy extends passport strategy and here you can specify your strategy Let me see if we need to, we have all these uh, modules already added. Passport strategy and then inside a constructor we will just define, okay, we are using authentication service and uh, username field. So first of all, let's import all the modules. So here we are going to add uh, all the required modules. I think there are lots of modules are missing. So add them, CD apps. STS REST API auth and here I will do PNP add prepaid okay. we can just do PNP add so we need a cookie parser because we are going to return cookies and we need a passport then we need a passport JWT and we need a passport local okay these are the some of the modules which I need npm it's pnpm add sorry for that okay pnpm add cookie parser what is the error here okay passport i there is a typo Passport JWT, Passport Local, Passport Cookie Parser. So it is adding all the, the required uh, modules and we can also add the typings. Typings is also required. So we have added all the, the required modules here in the package JSON. I added a bcrypt also, Passport, Passport JWT, JWT and Passport Local. And now we will just go back to our code and we'll start writing local strategy. So this passport strategy we are going to import. So passport strategy that is going to come from Nest.js passport. Is it something we have missed? So I will add this dependency. Something is always missing. These are just like the types and then this strategy is going to come from passport local and then this passport strategy is coming from uh, it will take some time maybe so i will just import this passport strategy from nest.js passport and here it is going to have a constructor inside a constructor we are going to inject our authentication service service authentication service okay and then 
here it is going to call the parent class constructor using super and then inside of super we are going to pass the username field username field is something missing there let me see why it's not populating so i mean when you are passing things in the payload what is the username so email is considered as a username field here and then once it validates then we are going to compare we are going to pass email and the password to our method so it's like same thing we we used to do in the node.js uh, passport local api uh, on that endpoint we were just passing the email and the password when using local strategy we were just comparing the username password to our api database i mean inside a database and here return what is the advantage of you if i will tell you using this strategy once you do the login you will return the current uh, session of the user and that session of the user will get added to the request.user object so we are return this dot authentication service but here we are going to define get authenticated user so this is our auth service and auth service we are going to add a new method which is something like public async at auth user and here you are passing email and the password email is of type string and password is of type string and how we will do it first we will try to validate if uh, this data is correct because if user is not found then we are going to just return http exception All right wrong credential provided or something like that if it is valid then how we are going to access that const user equal to await this dot user service dot by email right first of all we are going to see if email is user is there with this email email dot to lower case if user is there let's say if user is there then we are going to proceed further and here we are going to verify the password await this dot verify so it's a bcrypt compare so plain text password i mean this is the we'll say text password which we are getting from the request payload so here we are passing two argument text password and the user dot password okay and this verify password we can define this method this is the private method we are going to use private async this is verify password and it is taking two argument one is the plain password another is the hash password it's password which is also a type string and then next password which is of type string okay and then we will just use a bcrypt here cons is match found we can just use a bcrypt bcrypt.compare is a method and it takes two argument plain text password and uh, hash password that's it this we can return if they are not matching we can throw the exception from here or verify user yeah we can throw an exception if password is not matching is match found is false we can throw new uh unauthent uh http exception i mean we can just throw new bad request exception or something like that there are many ways of doing it and we can just say invalid credential passed anything you want and then verify password we are calling here so if verify password is everything is good we will just 
user so let's say if it is not returning the exception that means everything is good and here if user is there if user is not there also then then also we need to throw an exception here uh bad request exception right let's say the email match not found user is null then bad request exception so we can just make a proper message invalid credential found provided invalid username password provided so this is simple uh, method which you are going to access get auth user from your local strategy so here we auth service dot get auth user and we are passing email and password and why we are returning it so when you are returning it this data will be available on your request object so this is the local strategy and we can create a local auth card for it so be an injectable class there is just another way of doing it otherwise you can also do it in the same way export class uh, local auth guard okay that extends auth guard from the next year's passport and the name here is the local because you can create a multiple auth guards and this local auth guard i'm going to add to my controller where i'm doing a login so this is my controller and here i can add this how to add this so there is annotation use guard and inside a use guard you can just specify which card you want local auth card okay and then because when you are doing it once everything is successful everything will be added inside a request object and here you, we need to override request with user because now it's not plain request object this is a request object which contains the user object so request with user we can create a simple type here interface inside authentication i can create a simple type request with user.ts and here we create this custom type so this user we are adding and import and this request with user i will add inside auth controller so this is how i will do the login and once you receive because why i am doing it because this authentication and comparing password i have i have redirected using local auth guard now here i am getting the user object from the request so that user object i can access to create a token gwt token session token or whatever and here i am just creating const cookies because i am going to return the cookies so i am going to have a this dot auth service this dot auth service dot get cookies with gwt token this is the method i am going to write and i am going to pass user maybe use the whole user object with gwt token so i am going to define this method there here let's say this is public async it was async method or what uh, because okay we are not calling await so this is the public method and then this is the user object which is of user entity and then how we are doing it so this is authentication service and here we are getting the cookies so first of all get the payload so first we need to create a payload to create the token right so inside payload what i'm saying is i'm going to put the user id that is the part of user dot id and let's see the email also i'm putting so i can just do user dot email and this we can create a simple interface for it like what all things i'm adding inside the token so there is a user id which is a string 
and then there is an email which is of type string this is my token payload so i'm adding this token payload here and now so once you have it what then what is the next thing is you need to create a jw users need to use jwt sign so here we will are going to use a jwt sign to create a token so here we are using json web token so how should we do it we are going to use a jwt service for that so we are going step by step so we will use jwt service here private read only jwt service jwt service will come from next js so first of all i think we need to import this uh, nest js uh, jwt let's add that nest js jwt and then say it so this dot this dot jwt service dot sign this is what we need to do okay these methods will come soon once the module is installed so here what it is doing jwt service dot sign this is a simple method. I will stand it, sign it with pass the payload. So it will give you the token, and here you need to return the cookie string. Right? So, what is the cookie string? Because cookie contains the string and it also contains the expiry. So, we will see are we and first of all, how we are initializing this nest JS JWT module. We need to do it at the module level. So here is our authentication module. Here we need to initialize it properly, right? How we can do it is here we will import a JWT module. The module JWT. Okay, it is always a problem when you are importing a new module. It will not populate okay it is it is available to me jwt module dot here we just do register async right? we are doing a dynamic registration of this module because this module depends on config service so here we will be using use factory that is correct so inside uh, the use factory there are there are, many, there are many ways to initialize the modules okay what all you are importing i am dependent on config service So this config service is coming from config module and then what we are injecting is the config service import is the config module and we are injecting config service the part of config module and then we are doing it use factory and uh, this is a sync method and what we are passing is config service config is of type of config service and here we are just going to return the config this module options right inside a return statement what it will be doing ideally we should have done it like this okay we can return it even after using the arrow function secret so secret will be used by config config dot get do, do we have it I was using it so actually API log level so we need to define these JWT secret and all these variables so I will go to this config package I have config source config default here I can just have two variables one is the config interface so let's say auth which contains auth config of type auth config this is our uh, simple package which we have auth config and this is the interface we are creating export la export interface it contains two things secret and expiry secret is of type string and then there is another thing uh, is expiration that is also a string we will convert it so this is our auth config uh, so what i will do is inside a default interface this is required so auth secret 
query and then inside uh, this service how we are going to get the auth because i mean it's just like a custom implementation of auth service which i explained earlier here i'm just trying to get these values from the environment variable that's it and i'm going to use this auth service in all my packages so there is expiry and other parameter which we are using so here is auth secret and this is auth token expiry whatever the environment variable you want now i will just build this so these things will be available to my target package secret and expiry okay here i will go to the authentication module because this is dependent on that so we have is auth this will come when we start uh, loading it so how to adopt the changes first of all let's go to our package what i will do is first of all i will build this building means whatever the changes we have done in this uh, mini package configuration package this looks fine and then i will try to build our application which is which is our application press author express type script okay let me see what is the package json we have added so what namespace we have added uh, this is nest js it's zero to okay nest js auth apis same should be available in the nx console we'll reload it this is our package and i will try to build this and you can see in the dependencies we are already using nest js config database email http whatever the dependencies okay once you see this is building our dependent package first okay that's it so now it should have added the latest version latest changes of uh, the config package so we'll go to the domain authentication service i just try to show you like how to adopt the changes so here if i try to just change it i can see auth is there now auth secret so we need to send we need to return two parameters from here secret and sign in options sign in options which contains expire in okay that will be also coming from uh, config service so i mean that is like you just put the numeric value and i will add we will add just a s to that so config dot config dot get how to do it config dot get dot auth dot expiry so that will be just a string numeric value we will just add so it's like a 300 seconds and something like that so this is how we are creating initializing the jwt module and when you do jw dot, dot dot sign it will use this secret to create the token for you okay that is like the secret source and here it is in, it is dependent on the config module also which we are getting externally config module user module module also because we are using fast and this is our auth module password module user module and inside providers now we have local strategy and we'll add a jwt strategy when we create it that's it okay so this is a simple authentication we have created uh, which is end to end we will try to test it what we are going to do now is we will, we will also create a jwt strategy that is all about okay let's say what i'm doing from here inside from auth service here i created a token okay i also need to return the token that is a missing piece so what we are doing i just need to create a simple uh string okay what is the expiry of the cookies and all because the expiry of the cookies should be same as the expiry of the token so i can also inject the config service here that we can do already config service and here it is config service coming from this package and because why why we need it is this is the string we are creating once you receive the token 
we can simply return authentication equal to the token which we have received and then here we need to get the the maximum expiry of the cookie that we can get using this dot config service dot get dot auth dot expiry that's it okay so this is get cookies with jwt token and that is what we are doing inside auth controller this is we have received the cookies and how we return the cookies from the controller right because we have got the cookies and now uh, we can just do a response uh, it's a request right so we can simply set response is of type res response that should be coming from express okay and we can simply say is response dot i think there is a method response dot set header inside this you can just do a set cookies and use your digital cookie string so we already received it and then response of set should work okay because here we are using response request response so it's a simple login once you do the login there is a simple logout also we can add what the logout will do is here also we can just use here logout means you need to be already logged in that means your such session must exist so here we are going to use some jwt auth guard that will make sure that you are a valid you have a valid session okay application json user logged out successfully and here this is method logout and inside logout uh, you will use the same request object and what we need to do once you do the, you do the logout we need to set the the cookies to the empty right okay so here we can call the method get cookies for logout and this method we can define inside our authentication service get cookies for logout or service simple it just reset the cookies for us and then okay here also we are accessing the response i will try to get it from here because it is also setting the cookies once you do the logout and here get cookies for logout you don't need to pass the user set cookies empty response not sent this is the logout and now finally we need to add the jwt strategy also so if i try to draw it on the simple chart how it looks like the whole process so this is also important like what we are doing here this is our let's say the, the user module and this is let's say our auth module and user module user module is accessing the, the data from the database this is our auth module okay so we are also using these strategies what we are using is local strategy and then there is another thing is jwt strategy and what we are doing once you do the login and we are using this vcrypt and once you are doing a login what we are doing is we are creating a token set the token inside the cookies and send so we are actually sending the cookies and the cookies can be http only and all and once you do the logout you will be coming back and we will be extracting your jwt token token from cookies validate session and then return empty cookies i mean just uh, reset your cookies that's it so this is your logout flow and inside auth we are using controller service and all inside the uh, user we are also using the same and this the auth module is dependent on this and both has the controller so user has a user apis which will be using this auth guard so inside auth let's talk about the login 
login route is using login auth guard which is using local strategy right that is simple login okay and when when it comes to all the protected api routes there uh, you you will be using a gwt auth guard let's say this is a protected api there you will be using gwt auth guard what that auth guard will check okay inside a cookies you are sending a token that is valid or not if that is valid it will just add a user object on the request.user same thing is being done by this uh, local strategy it is also doing the same thing it is putting the data of user on the request.user and then you can access the request.user in your apis okay so simple controller services methods we have written we are using big crypto sign and uh, and we are using typo rm so this is a simple typo rm we are using i don't think we have written anything complex in the type rm right now so we have just have to correct it even not any relationship then we will have another okay let's say i have a post post entity right so there will be some, some apis post will also use this uh, auth guard jwt auth guard to protect the apis and it will be using once user session exists and everything is good then it will be having just another entity type rm entity which is post because from this auth guard we have validated that user session exists and valid then it will put the user object on the request and you can create a post and populate the author data and all so it's like a simple analogy of uh, building a simple authentication service you can just if you don't want to use a local strategy or log login auth guard you can just you can skip it what we you can do is inside your login method get the email password compare with the database and all and just return the cookies so what we are doing is we are using jwt nestjs passport jwt that is uh, another uh, library passport jwt we are doing asynchronous initialization of this right this we are using to create the token, sign, verify all those things will happen through this internally. And it is being used by this uh, JWT strategy and JWT auth card. So let's add the, the missing pieces in our code. I will be adding this uh, JWT strategy. So JWT strategy is simple. What JWT strategy looks like? I will just talk about it. Because it's not rocket science, it's same thing. I copied the same code here. So we need a config service which we can get from con and this is the user service. Okay, and uh, secret and key we can get this from this dot config service dot get auth dot secret. And this is your token payload. I think we define this interface somewhere that contains the user ID and email. Token payload, okay. Let's put it any. We already know that it contains the user ID and uh, email inside a token payload. Super must be called before. This is a JWT strategy. what we are accessing we are accessing the config service config service dot get auth secret and we are passing payload so what we are doing here is if you remember extract uh, jwt dot x from extractor here what we are doing is we are trying to extract the jwt token from this cookies right request dot cookies dot authentication because the, in the same cookie name we are setting it once you are doing the login so we go to jwt token we will verify it and once the verification is done we can decode the payload because this is the decoded payload in the validate method that contains the user id and this data will be added inside a request dot user and you will access it in your, in your controllers and route similarly we created auth guard 
that we can use at uh, all the APIs which are protected. Let's say the logout. Here we will be using this auth guard. So similarly, let's say if you want to fetch your own user profile. So this is the logout, right? If you just wanted to fetch your own user data, right? Simply get forward slash users get. So authentication authentication so it will just to authenticate and it will give you the user object so what all different api routes we have on this authentication register authentication login logout and a simple authentication that will check okay user session exists then i will give you the return user request dot user object now it's all now it's time to test this implementation and we also need to start this app and uh, we already have this entity created user entity so it will create this uh, database table there inside entity i think we can specify the name also yes name i will i just want to have a table name as a users let's do the testing for this so now let's go step by step i will do first of all build this is the next console you can use that the build is happening properly or not and then i will also do docker compose up to see uh, because we have docker compose at the root of the project which contains the postgres so i will just do docker compose up so that we can have this database running on port 5432 and it is using test api database okay it has a mongodb also inside this container and then postgres we are more interested in the postgres server started database created test api okay we are good here I will use the test API same inside and in my implementation environment here test API and let's see what all environment variables we need we can get it from because we added two auth variables uh, that contains auth secret and auth token expiry auth secret and auth token expiry Auth secret is anything. Auth token expiry. Let's say 300 seconds. Okay, database URL we have populated. So our container is running. Build is happening. Now let's start the application and troubleshoot any errors if we see. Okay, so now let's start our application. I can you can use NX console or you can go to the directory and do npm run start. npm run start now. So this is zero to nest js uh, api auth api and i can see it started okay the thing is uh, we are using this typo or uh, nest js uh, database module and we are using this database package so i think i already have a synchronization true synchronization true that means when you change in the entity it will automatically reflect in the in the database when you restart it so this will create this entity so now we can test our implementation this is running on which port this is main.ts api v1 port and port we are passing this environment variables and port is 30100 and here we can see our apis i will just try to enter hello hello because it is using basic auth to protect your uh, swagger docs okay simply this is authorization let's check apis okay simply and here we can just see all these api endpoints login register and all i didn't test it and you can see these api specs that the request body contains this sample payload that is coming from our DTUs because we have defined what is required, what is not required. And if I try to create it, okay, it has created it. That's a smart. I mean, you can see this is the response body email, password, name, and ID. ID is auto incremented. So either we can use a UUID for this, so we can make a changes, required changes for that. So if we want to have a UUID instead of uh, this auto incremented primary key, we can go to user entity and then 
primary generated column and type is UUID that's it now it will restart I mean when you see the file changes it will try to apply those changes in the database okay you can see here drop constraint primary key drop column ID users it is adding the ID with the UUID constraint right this is the UUID generate v4 and it is adding the primary key constraint that is all happening through the because we have a typo rm sync true now i can just do the create again and this is coming correctly right like because we have this status code 500 user with email already exists that is also working so I'll just make it is email one and the user created successfully and then i will also try to do the login okay so the thing is because we are not passing this body dto in the login how can we test this api okay let me just think because currently it will just send uh, uh, unauthorized because we are not passing the username password for the passport local so in this case what we can do we can use uh, this insomnia tool i will try to show you we can use this insomnia tool to hit this uh, from the, the postman like tool because the swagger is not showing it because we are not using the login dto i'm talking about this particular piece here here is authentication auth controller and if you see our login api uh, we are not passing any dto so if you're not passing dto you, that won't be reflected in the body of the swagger you can see that this is not showing any kind of a body part right so let's try to pass this thing email one through the postman so there is an email and then there is a password and we will send it and here you can see this is what we got i can also try to do the sign up api through this client only so to avoid any confusion auth login auth register So this is auth register post okay null value for the column name okay sorry it's a name for us email name and password yeah so this is uh, the user has been created in the system now we can do the login with the same there is one thing uh, I mean it should uh, have thrown us this password validation error right because we are passing we are not uh, satisfying this uh, dto validation but why that is happening are we using the validation pipe or now it will pass right because uh, we already created this user and you can see this token is being set and the token uh, sorry cookies authentication and this cookies right and now if i try to access simple authentication get I will just call it is get auth simple authentication then 500 internal server error so we will see that what curl request we are sending for this okay api v1 authentication okay we'll try to figure that out first of all our login is working fine we are getting all the the headers which we need because we are not returning data we are just sending a setting a cookies and then we are returning it and here you can see the auth login register both are working fine and if you change the email that is already working now uh, the thing we need to check about the authentication api right that once you logged in we are sending the data in the headers so this is our request headers and i don't see the cookies going here this is cookies set right okay many cookies has been set i will try to remove them so we need to set this cookies done let me see these are request headers and cookies are not set right managed cookies local host done done uh, will it send these cookies because it's all about that this cookie is not being sent inside the request if it will start uh, okay this is authentication 
this is the our cookies except and all and then we are getting this something may be wrong with the environment variable let's see this i will try to get rid of this thing okay are we getting any error let's try to debug this simple thing okay it is showing unknown authentication strategy jwt okay that is good thing at least we know we have some error so our login is working our register is successfully everything is happening as expected authentication dot register authentication dot login we are getting these cookies in the response for the login now this is authentication and we have log out also so jwt authentication guard auth guard jwt so let's go to jwt strategy Here we need to specify what strategy we are using so let's see our jwt strategy so because we are using when we are using multiple strategy i think there is another argument which is name which is i think jwt let me check in the documents so that is the only fix we need to perform after that once the jwt strategy is identified it will get the token from the cookies validate the user and will return the user on the request object so uh, i mean these are the different ways in which uh, we can check our authentication uh, like you do the login i return the uh, the cookies so this is the cookies we are returning and then because these are the http only cookies you can see these are attached to the domain local host and these cookies will be sent automatically to the relevant request so once you send it like in the fetch auth we should be able to uh, decode the cookies and get the jwt token from it identify user and just return the user now on, on similarly there are there is another way of doing it i mean uh, if you don't want to use the cookies you can just return the token from here let's say we'll do it in the other way also so here we are just returning a token and uh, logout is just only because once the token is generated that token is valid till it gets expired okay now what we are going to do here is inside auth controller let's comment this out for now and inside the login what we are going to do is uh, login okay here this is simple logout login is here login is here and what we are doing is we got the token let's say this method is returning a token so we can just return a token we can just use the request response and instead of doing it something like this we will be calling this method and return now you can generate access token and the, the refresh token this is simple token we are returning from the login and for now and on the logout we are not doing much we will decide what needs to be done here because it's a token based authentication so until unless you don't store the token state in the database there is no need of uh, doing logout because logout will not expire the token once the token is generated or you just you just store the state of the session inside a database and when you do the logout just delete the token from the database or some session id so if i do the login now now we have changed a little bit uh, things okay i need to remove this thing otherwise it won't return any response i will restart it and i do the login so here this is my token right now this token can be sent inside authorization header so let's say this is the fetch auth here i can say authorization and it can be a bearer header right and this is my token now what needs to be changed in the JWT strategy because there are many ways in which you can extract the headers. So here we will be using extract headers from authorization, not from the cookies, right? We are just writing a custom utility here, but here it already provides 
I think I can just say from auth header as a bearer token. And that's it, I think. So what it will do is it will automatically pass the authorization header and then it will just try to validate if this token is valid. Okay, so here there are many methods. So from extractor, that means you need to write your own utility method. And from uh, auth header as a bearer, that means you are passing the authorization header something like this. First of all, this you are passing inside the headers and it looks like this. So this is bearer and your token. This is what you are passing inside the authorization header. So you can directly get it using this method or you write your own utility methods to extract the, the token from coming inside a request.cookies and all. And here I can see when I hit this, I'm getting this. This is what I need, right? Uh, because we are hitting the authentication. That means give me my current user session. And I'm just passing this token. That means I'm logged in. Okay. So this is pretty much simple implementation. But there are really important, very important points here. While doing, while working with the multiple strategies. So here I'm using local strategy and GWT strategy. So remember, few things which I also encountered a problems. This strategy will be imported from Passport GWT for the GWT strategy. And for the local strategy, this strategy will be imported from Passport local. I mean, in the latest packages, it is being imported from uh, Nest.js Passport, but that will create a problem. I mean, you will see uh, really weird errors. So import strategy from Passport local and for GWT strategy, import strategy from Passport GWT and rest all it's it's same thing for GWT you are just uh, you are extracting this from the headers this uh, local strategy is all about you are passing the username password in the body and we are validating it using service method and adding that on the request.user and here we have these two respective auth guards one is a local auth guard one is a JWT auth guard for which are pointing to these respective strategies okay so this is all about, uh, I mean, you can create a production level uh, authentication APIs. Till now, I'm covering these authentication API for Express TypeScript and then Express TypeScript uh, Mongoose, Express TypeScript Postgres. And then this is the same kind of authentication mechanism using uh, Nest.js, Postgres, TypeORM, Bcrypt and uh, all these mixed combinations of library. But this is purely on the Nest.js. We have this Docker Compose and we are using this PNPM workspace and the NX tooling to really make it production ready. So here I'm just keeping adding, keep adding all these modules. In the next video, we are going to work on GraphQL implementation. That's really going to be interesting because on top of this, we are also going to use a GraphQL module and we are going to asynchronously initialize the GraphQL module dot for root, for root async and there are two different ways to create a graphql service with the nest gs schema first and a code first approach so let's explore that i will push this code on the github 